One of the most cruel ways that scammers steal money from people is to convince them to place their cash into a box and post it to a money mule. These money mules will pick up packages of cash delivered to houses all over the country. They're usually couriered overnight. It's all designed to minimise the risk of someone tracking this money back to the scammer. But with the help of an ex-NASA engineer, the guy who has created the famous glitter bomb, these scammers are going to get a very rude awakening. Anyone who's watched my channel will be very familiar with how the refund scam works. This particular email was sent to me by a scammer who called himself Stephen. As always, I call the number on these emails and I attempt to get remote access to the scammer's computer, even though they think they're scamming me. And I can see that almost each and every day these online hackers are trying to get inside your computer. Do you do any kind of financial activities on this computer, like online banking or shopping? So as Stephen was inquiring about those important things like my online banking activity, I was reversing the connection. And as I watched him scam other people, a few things became very clear. Firstly, the emails seemed to work, albeit they changed the phone number now and again, and eventually victims would log into their online bank accounts to get the promised refund. And after they manipulated the bank pages, Stephen and his pals were particularly keen to get their victims to put money into a box and send it through the mail. So when I saw a scammer showing his victim where her nearest FedEx print centre was, it meant only one thing. She was just about to mail some cash. When I got in touch with the victim, whose name is Tracy, she explained to me what she saw happen. They were supposed to give me a refund of $300, and when I put it in the computer... I, I mistyped it as, as $13,000. So I had to send money back to them, $12,500, and that's where I am. I'm hoping you haven't sent that money. I have sent it. It seems I may have been just too late. She had already mailed more than $12,000 to another address in New York. I sent it early this morning. How do oh, I was it started? early this morning? Was it? I just thought it was just this minute. No, I sent it. I sent it. Um. Uh. Um. At um. Oh my God! Like around eleven o'clock. So I got Tracy to get in touch with FedEx to try and stop this package from arriving to the Money Mule's address. But this gave me a chance to put into operation something that Mark Roper and I had discussed some time ago. Among other things, Mark is the inventor of the glitter bomb, something which has a GPS attached and cameras, and we could even monitor who opens these packages. I've always been keen to see how scammers who are typically based in India manage to recruit money mules who are in a different continent. And by tracking packages and addresses, we may be able to find out how. Although Tracy had contacted FedEx and they promised to return her package to her, we noticed that it was still being shipped, and in fact, it was just about to arrive at the scammer's house. Mark had some private investigators stake out the house where the cash was supposed to arrive the following day. The address was an Airbnb rental, and this woman was acting very suspiciously and even stopping FedEx vans. And to everyone's horror, despite the assurances from FedEx, Tracy's money did end up going to that house. But luckily, the PI was on hand to intercept it. Tracy, something, yeah, that's the one. Don't play with this one, please. Okay. This is the fraudulent one. If that one's going, that's also going to 731? Okay. Can I take a picture of that one, too? It was incredibly fortunate for Tracy that we managed to stop this package from being delivered but we also spotted a second package for the same address, this time for a woman named Phyllis. We had managed to stop two victims from being scammed. We were able to trace this second victim, and she too has her money back now. When the money was safely returned, it was our chance to send a second package, this time with a glitter bomb. We still didn't have the satisfaction of having one of these money mules open something that was going to cover them in glitter and fart spray. But things didn't quite go according to plan. I've left a link here 
to show exactly what happened with the second package that arrived at that address. But here's a little taster of what you can see in Mark's video. Hello! You gotta give up or you're thirsty for more? But as the glitter bombs were finding their targets in the USA, I was having a closer look at what was going on in India. One thing I did know was where these scammers were located. When I first encountered them in June 2020, they were in this area of Kolkata. But shortly after the pandemic kicked in, they moved north of their original location. They ended up in the Maniktala area of the city. I could tell all of this from the Wi-Fi information. Together with Google's API and these highlighted MAC addresses, I was able to get their location accurate to about 150 metres. So that was where they were, but what about who they were? I got a bit of a hint whenever I saw the scammer update a Facebook page of a woman. I could see that her husband was named Rafi, so this was likely to be Stephen's real name, but obviously I can't be 100% sure. And what I also knew was that Stephen didn't work alone. He would regularly receive a spreadsheet of phone numbers of potential victims in the USA. The data included full names and addresses, and most importantly for the robocalls, their phone numbers. On a typical night, there would be seven or eight agents fielding calls from potential victims, either by email or from robocalls. They would make thousands of phone calls. Here you can see over a hundred calls per second with just seven people manning the phones. A close look at the audio files being used in their automated dialer showed that they were involved in multiple types of scams. They would pretend to be Amazon, Microsoft and make phone calls to the UK, USA and Australia. This is Telstra Technical Department. We are hereby to inform you that your internet line will be terminated from today onward. To fix up the problem, please press 1 to connect with Telstra. If you wish to disconnect your internet, press 2. This is Amazon. This call is to authorize the payment of $799 for your recent order on Amazon for Apple iPhone 11. If you did not place this order, then please press 1 and speak to our representative, thank you. And it would take thousands of phone calls before they managed to get any victims. And although I would warn anyone that I saw being scammed, sometimes I couldn't see the scam happening because it was on a different computer that I couldn't see. And one evening I spotted Stephen logging into a victim's computer using a remote access software called UltraViewer and AnyDesk. It turned out he was trying to find out what happened to some cash that he'd managed to get a victim to send through FedEx. He opened the victim's email so that he could read the correspondence. At this point the victims were still unaware that the scammers had access to their computer, but he still carefully locked the keyboard and mouse and blackened the screen so that he couldn't be seen reading their emails. It was clear that the victims had shipped a package more than a month earlier. But when I looked to see what happened to this package, it seemed that it had been seized by the police. It's illegal to ship cash this way, and there are procedures to detect cash being sent by mail. But the scammers would have already known that this money was seized. What they really wanted to find out was how the investigation was going. This is why they were looking at the emails. But thanks to their nosiness, I now knew the person leading the investigation. Through this investigating agent, I was able to get in touch with the people whose computer was being accessed by the scammers. I was also able to give them all the information that I knew about the people who had scammed them. I passed on not only the information about who they were, but also details of other victims, including Tracy. But this investigation was about much more than sending glitter bombs to money mules. I really wanted to understand how they recruited people in the USA and if there were any weak points other than intercepting the money itself. And two things were very clear. Firstly, that they only rented an Airbnb for a very short amount of time, so it was a very limited opportunity for the money to get to the mule. Secondly, they totally relied on a tracking number. 
They needed this in the case of an emergency where they may have to divert the package somewhere else. So when a different group, this time SSA scammers, decided to run the same sort of scam on me, I put on my voice changer and attempted to play them at their own game. Give me the address anyway and I'll, I'll, I can do it. I mean, I don't know when I can go out. Let me give you the, uh, the address then. All right, okay. Okay, so the address is John. It's J-O-H-N. It's the name of the person, I mean. Yeah, John. John Harry, H-A-R-R-Y. Okay. All right, and yes. the address is, the address is 3925. When I had the details, I was deliberately vague about when I would mail the cash. And I told them I would only be able to do it the following day. I fully expected them to give me a different address the next day. But when they called me back, I broke the bad news that I'd already posted the cash. Mess, but you told me yesterday that you won't be able to go, so you cancelled it, right? No. You, I told you we'll do it next day. So no, without no. informing you, why did you went? I've just... I've posted it. You asked me to post it. I, I, I got time and I went and posted it. Okay, do you have the tracking number? Do you have the receipt? I knew that without this receipt and tracking number, they wouldn't be able to divert the package to some other address. So yes, I have yes. cancelled that address, okay? How so can there you cancel no an address? It's out. still going to that address. I, I, I got a bit of time and I thought... It's very close. I'll nip so out and I'll... you could have I'll... informed me. Listen to me. Listen to me, miss, okay? See, I'm not getting angry on you, but I'm not yelling at you, Anderson, okay? Right, I was trying to help you. That's all. I thought I thought yeah, you would I know get that it today. Miss, and... the, mistake, the mistake, the mistake is, Miss Anderson, the mistake is that you have to inform me first before you do anything. Oh, but you asked me now to post it to that address, so I thought it would help you. No, miss. You told me that you will not be able to go today. You will be able to go tomorrow. So I cancelled that address. Now just so, now do anything, miss, and just get the receipt. Okay, I want the receipt anyhow. Oh, right. That's there the thing. That's the thing. I I, I I put the receipt into my my pocket, and I think I think I may have thrown it out. I, I but it should be there already. You don't need the receipt. It should be there. The prospect of missing out on $10,000 cash was beginning to dawn on our scammer. So it doesn't matter, okay? What is the proof you have that it is already posted? Do you have any proof with you? Yes, the parcel's there. What is the proof? The receipt is the proof. So I need the proof that the money is sent or forget about your money then. Are you dumb? Are you dumb? Are you dumb? Are you gone out of your mind? I'm telling you, go to the UPS, get a new tracking ID. Go to the UPS. Why don't you go to the UPS? You're shouting. Because you're acting like dumb. There is money in it. Why don't you understand? There is worth $10,000 in it. Not only your money is going over there, okay? There are plenty of money which is going over there. After disconnecting the call, you didn't went and you did it. You did it. Without informing you, you did it. Okay, I, I without did. informing I, me, you did it. I, I did, but you only, it's only, you only did what you asked me to do, and uh, it's already but there. I asked you to stay home. I asked you to stay home. I didn't ask you to walk in the night, go to the UPS, and ask not over there. I asked you to be home, and without informing me, after telling me that you can't go in the dark, you went and you did it. That is your mistake. You're an angry little elf. He's an angry elf. You understand? I want the tracking ID. Anyhow, I do not know from where you're going to get it, but you have to get it. Search for the receipt. Go and bang your head at the UPS. Give me the tracking ID or forget about your money. Okay, when are you going to return my money? Talk to my attorney, miss. Talk to my attorney. But they were so easy to wind up that I thought I'd chance my arm and try and get some money out of the scammers. I'd convinced them that I'd sent so much cash by this point that it was running so short and it would take me a while to get yet more money together, so in the meantime, I'd need something like more cash or a gift card to keep me going. Alright, yes, I've got the card numbers for you, so you can just take it down. It's a Walmart gift card and you can also check the balance online, okay? Uh, and once you have the number, I'm sure you would be good to go for at least, at least a week. Okay. 
Yes, go ahead. All right, uh, so it starts with 6180. I felt sure that they would give me a fake gift card number, but lo and behold, when I put it into the Walmart gift card balance checker, it worked out to be $100. I had scammed them. I put out a tweet to see what would be the best thing to do with this $100 gift card, and the suggestions ranged from a giveaway in the YouTube comments section, or to a homeless charity. I opted for the homeless charity. Uh, let's see if you feel that this is something that, uh, you know... Well, I, I don't I, think I've, so turned off, I've turned off the voice changer. So, wh whereabouts in Kolkata are you? I was really interested to know if they'd ever been scammed before. You finally figured out that I've been winding you up for the last All right, week. so you were using voice changer? Were of you using voice changer? Of course I was using a voice changer. What a oh, shame. You took $100. You, you took $100. Is, is uh -huh. it correct? You took I did. $100? That's right. I took your money. That's right. right. That's a real so shame. You're, you're the first person you have to scam the scammer. Good oh. job, buddy. Well, yeah, it was good. I was trying to get more money out of you, but actually you guys are so boring that I didn't bother with it. I've, all, I've only ordered a pizza for you. I've also ordered a pizza for you. Did you got the pizza? Uh, How was the pizza? pizza or if a pizza ever arrived because I give you a fake address as you must realize by now I, I'm not even in the USA okay so you have been well scammed you are really good at what you do you are really good at what you do where you are you're the man you are the man good buddy good buddy yeah, you're like that. I really appreciate you have you never been scammed before? You're an amazing person. You're an amazing person. Teach me something. Teach me something. Seriously, have you never been scammed before? Never, never, never in my life. Oh, did oh, that's a shame, isn't it? Never in my life, buddy. Never in my life, buddy. You are amazing, buddy. You are amazing. I thought if he was impressed that I'd scammed him, he might open up a bit more, so I asked him a few more probing questions. How much money you guys actually make on these scams? Uh, we have just started this thing, so we have not made a lot of money. It's just, you know, been a few days or I can say a few months, maybe a month or two since I started this. Yeah. And I actually don't own this. I'm working here. So that's not oh. a huge amount that I make. Whatever I've made for this month, we've already taken it. So good job, buddy. Yeah? So that's what I've made for a month, $100, and you've taken it. Uh, well, I mean, I uh, sorry if if I lack uh, you, sympathy. You could, have, uh, you could have taken hundred dollars. You could have taken one fifty, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm you a... know, after this, what we are going to do? Uh -huh. uh, you know, after this, what we're going to do? Uh, yeah. We're just going to you know smoke up some beer and you know just get high because this is the first time <laughs> we have been scammed, buddy. Uh, do you want it to go on to YouTube? Uh, on YouTube, so you're putting this on YouTube. Do you want me to put it on YouTube? Nobody, no, no, no. Don't do that yet. No, don't do that. Well, sure, we don't Everybody know your name. Do we don't know your name. But I did keep probing for information. I was hoping that I would find out how they recruited the money mules. But of course, he claimed that he was too low down in the organization. And that somebody else was responsible for doing that part of the business. So this part is still a bit of a mystery. And it might be that to find out the answer, we may even have to travel to India. Maybe look out for a future video where Mark and I might try to get to the bottom of the money mule scams. And if you're wondering what happened to the lady who's just been arrested here, please check out Pierogi or Scammer Payback's video about the subject. Like me, Pierogi led these scammers on and eventually it ended up in what you can see in this picture. There's a link to his video in the top corner. If you would like to support me in my fight against scammers, I have a Patreon channel and the link is on screen and in the description. I'm also on Twitter at JimBrowning11 and again, thank you for watching.